Ever sat down at the Cheesecake Factory and gone cross-eyed perusing the copy of War and Peace they call a menu? With so many options, not everything can be a hit, right? Here's a rundown of what not to order at the Cheesecake Factory. The Cheesecake Factory attempts to set apart its burger menu by referring to it as a selection of glam burgers. However, the original old-fashioned burger is not a favorite among some customers. It's your typical burger with lettuce, tomato, onions, and pickles, so there are definitely other options with more flavorful toppings. It's also lacking cheese, making it a straight-up classic hamburger. One Zomato user in particular had a dining experience where the already average-tasting burger was missing a little tender loving care. The bread on my old-fashioned burger was so overly toasted it was nearly inedible, and my burger patty was quite overcooked. And while it's not so bad that you'll want to backflip your way out of the restaurant, <laughs> it might be better to stick to a burger with bacon or other unique toppings to add a little something extra to this plain Jane sandwich. Throughout the years, the Cheesecake Factory has featured a few dishes with crispy chicken, such as Korean fried chicken and crispy chicken costaletta. The southern fried chicken sliders are a popular appetizer for groups to share, but some people say the fried chicken falls flat. Not every restaurant can be successful when it comes to the restaurant chicken sandwich wars. One Zomato user described the overall dining experience at the Cheesecake Factory as not bad, but not good. Particularly, the fried chicken was deemed a not-so-good highlight of the meal. The person wrote, We were satisfied, but they can be better. With so many menu items, the restaurant can't make every single cuisine perfectly. So maybe it's just not the spot to expect expertly fried chicken. Or maybe lower your expectations a bit if you decide to order this appetizer for the table, should you be so inclined to test it out for yourself. Fish and chips are typical bar food, especially if you're dining somewhere close to a body of water. It's a simple plate of fried fish, french fries, and tartar sauce. However, the internet isn't all that in love with the Cheesecake Factory's take on the British classic. One Reddit user called the dish a joke. Sure, it was battered and fried, but the batter had no discernible flavor, not even salt. And if there's one thing you expect when eating this fried platter, it's that your mouth will water from the amount of salt. Mmm, that's a little… salty! One TripAdvisor review warns diners to not even bother ordering the fish and chips, saying this about the disappointing dish, The fish in the fish and chips had 90% batter and 10% fish. My husband sent it back. As a note, the Cheesecake Factory has plenty of seafood-centric menu items with much better reviews than the fish and chips, such as herb-crusted salmon and Jamaican black pepper shrimp. The Factory Burrito Grande at the Cheesecake Factory is an intimidating dish to look at. It's massive, packed with tons of nondescript fillings and drowned in a bright red sauce. But as pointed out by the burrito blog, the dish is technically more of an enchilada. Some reviews from TripAdvisor say that while the burrito is massive, Holy mother of all burritos! Sometimes the fillings aren't distributed equally, which brings down the quality of the dish. One user wrote that the $16 burrito was full of lumpy clumps of white rice smushed together, so it wasn't worth it. Based on the reviews and the high price, it sounds like the Factory Burrito Grande isn't the best way to spend $20 at the Cheesecake Factory. For the price of one burrito plus a tip, you could probably feed an entire family at a fast food taco spot. It sounds like it might even be more satisfying, flavor-wise, as well. The consensus that the Cheesecake Factory's toasted marshmallow s'mores galore cheesecake is a miss was determined by a large group of mashed readers. The US-based survey found that 23% of the 645 participants did not love the dessert. It's loaded with graham crackers, toasted marshmallow fluff, and Hershey's chocolate, but for some people it might just be a bit too much to cap off an already filling meal. S'mores are a dessert in and of themselves, so it may be overwhelming to combine them with a cheesecake. Plus, the texture is pretty one-note, aside from the graham cracker crumbles. The marshmallow fluff, whipped cream, and cheesecake filling all have a similar feel in your mouth, so it's not the most balanced dish, especially since it's rich with sugar. However, if you're a die-hard fan of the campfire treat, you might just have to ignore the mixed reviews and try it for yourself. 
If you've never dined in at the Cheesecake Factory, it can be daunting to know how to tackle the massive menu. One novice took to Quora to ask for some advice regarding the restaurant. Fortunately, a Cheesecake Factory diehard fan provided some insight on menu items to avoid entirely, even though they might be tempting. While the user claimed there are not many things they dislike about the restaurant, they did point out a few items in particular that aren't the best. According to the self-proclaimed expert, the buffalo blasts are worth avoiding. They're fried, greasy, and so filling that you probably won't feel like eating the rest of your meal. That's good advice. The Cheesecake Factory is one of those restaurants where it's too easy to fill up on appetizers and free bread. That, combined with their massive portions, is a recipe for disappointment. As the dish sounds like a strange mashup of buffalo chicken dip, wings, and fried wontons, there are definitely more flavor-packed appetizers on the menu. According to a review from Uproxx, the sweet corn tamale cakes are a must-skip at the Cheesecake Factory despite their uniqueness and visual appeal. The review points out that they are not so bad that you'll want to spit out your first bite… Whatever works. But they are overly sweet to be served as an appetizer. The little corn cakes lack a true savory aspect like meat or beans that would balance out the flavor. The sweet corn tamale cakes definitely has curb appeal, but don't be fooled by its colorful appearance. This is another Cheesecake Factory appetizer that's large enough to be an entree, so it might be a mistake to pick this one lackluster item to chow down on instead of other tastier options. It's also not a crowd pleaser, so it's not the best pick for something to share at the table. The Cheesecake Factory is known for a lot of things, including its unique variety of spring rolls and egg rolls. Some are a smash hit, like the avocado or Tex-Mex egg rolls that pack in a lot of flavors complemented by punchy dipping sauces. However, the cheeseburger-filled option is a bit of a miss. In fact, a former employee told Business Insider that the side item is worth skipping altogether. The worker explained that overall the fried pockets filled with beef, cheese, and onions are not as flavorful as the other meals on the menu. Yelp reviews describe the dish as being decent enough, though it's very easy for the shells to become greasy and lose their crispiness, which is one of the major appeals of a spring roll. Sometimes innovation breeds great ideas, like the other aforementioned egg rolls, but this one take just doesn't work, as it's unnatural to taste classic American cheeseburger flavors packed inside of an egg roll. The Cheesecake Factory has plenty of flavor combinations on its dessert menu, and the options for peanut butter lovers are particularly well represented. But a YouTuber who worked at the restaurant chain says the Reese's Peanut Butter Chocolate Cake Cheesecake is the weakest of the bunch. It's decadent and rich, which is part of its downfall, as it's really hard to stomach more than a few bites. Insider reviewed the cheesecake and wrote that the peanut butter and fudge make the slice too heavy and difficult for one person to indulge. Adam's Peanut Butter Cup Fudge Ripple seems to be the more popular pick for peanut butter lovers. But if you find yourself eating every shape of Reese's candy you can throughout the year, it still might be worth trying at the end of your Cheesecake Factory meal. The Cheesecake Factory menu really does cover an impressive number of regional cuisines, but that doesn't mean all are executed perfectly. In fact, some TripAdvisor reviews warn fellow diners to beware of the chain's take on a New Orleans classic, gumbo-inspired stew. According to one reviewer, the shrimp and chicken gumbo is too tomatoey, and it, quote, does not taste at all like real gumbo. The dish comes with shrimp, chicken, andouille sausage, tomatoes, peppers, onions, and garlic with a cream-style Cajun broth, so it's not lacking in flavor. But it's a bit of a weak take on a beloved and historic dish, so experts on Cajun cuisine will likely be disappointed with this version. The item might be more successful if the Cheesecake Factory did not refer to it as a type of gumbo, however. Such a distinction might be raising diners' expectations just a bit. Alfredo sauce is definitely something that is hit or miss for a lot of people. It seems simple to make a cheese-based sauce in which to drown pasta, but the dish can easily fall victim to being one note and lacking distinct flavors. Each element has to be executed well to make the item stand out, and according to one Yelp reviewer, the Cheesecake Factory's take on fettuccine Alfredo is less than satisfying. The reviewer wrote that their chicken alfredo order was a total dud and a no-go. They claimed the pasta stuck together and seemed as though it was reheated after cooking. While the writer didn't totally hate the flavor, they made it clear that this pasta dish is not something they plan to order from the chain again, as it's not worth its price tag. Luckily, there are over 200 other items to choose from to avoid such crushing disappointment. 
Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Mashed videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.